Today let's talk about foam. Let's talk about what it is, how to make it, and a few tips in getting the best out of your equipment. Foams can be plant-based or they can be animal-based. Many of the firefighting foams are made out of animal blood. Fun fact, you can actually eat them and survive if you're like that eager to survive. And of course there are also chemical foams which were never alive at any point. And they all basically fall into the family of surfactants, which you've used many times in the past, whether as a dish soap or a, you know, bar of soap or whatever. So you're already kind of familiar with what kills foams, such as oils or hard water. Um, but I'm pleased to say that neither one of those will have a really strong effect on aircrete. You can get away with a lot in aircrete, and I think part of this video should drive home that point. Our method of producing foam is not the best method, uh, but it is cheap and easy to use and widely available. It basically consists of forcing a bubble solution through a maze of small uh, orifices using compressed air. And with that in mind, let's go check out the equipment. Now here you see how I've got the um, foam generator set up. And you'll notice that something appears to be missing. Right here you probably have a regulator. And uh, what I've got is two valves. I've got a shutoff valve and a throttle valve. And we'll discuss that in more depth shortly. Many of you will recognize this as a regulator. It's understandable that you would make that mistake given its general morphology and close association with air compressors. However, advances in observational technology lead us now to believe that that taxonomy of this device is far closer to that of a dog turd. However, that being said, they are an indispensable part of the process and they are good enough. Now one of the biggest problems with getting your foam right out of the chute is the misconception that regulators maintain a certain pressure. They don't. This is a chart of an ideal regulator, which this is not, and even in an ideal one you can see there's an upper band and a lower band. So what it is doing is it's opening and closing and maintaining a band of pressure. So it's continually going up and down meaning your mix is going to be heavier and lighter and heavier and lighter as you go along. Nothing you can do about it because the regulator, when you try to adjust a regulator, you're somewhere, you could be anywhere in that hysteresis loop and you don't know where. It's like, it's like steering a car with a big dead spot in the steering. So you, it doesn't even engage the wheels until you get it over a certain amount. Uh, and I'm sure all of us have driven an older American car at some point and, and run into this issue. But this is worse because at least in a car, you can tell when it starts to um, engage the wheels. On a regulator, you have no feedback. So you're guessing, did I adjust it a quarter of a turn and it still didn't do anything, so adjust it another quarter, now it's way over or way under. Okay, and that's why I don't use a regulator on the foam machine. I already have a regulator at the compressor. I just set this regulator a little bit higher than I want and then I throttle it down using the throttle valve to the uh, a number that I would like to have. Now that doesn't remove this zigzaggy thing, it just removes the hassle of trying to guess where you are in the hysteresis loop while you endlessly adjust your uh, regulator and fill numerous buckets with foam for no particular reason. Uh, I don't know, if you're good with regulators, more power to you. If not, try getting a nice three or four turn throttle valve and I think it'll make a world of difference at least in how many buckets it takes you to dial it in. Now this is a quick and easy way to mix your foaming solution. You first put the hose in the bucket and fill it up to a point where the end of the hose is no longer splashing around. This will prevent you from producing excess foam while you're just trying to get it mixed. I'm turning it off here but you don't have to this is just for clarity. Presumably you'll have your ingredients already on the side. Now this is FM 160, but if you're using like some dish soap or other stuff, uh, you would also want to add some glycerin at this point to make your bubbles maybe last a little bit longer. 
Um, also, you'll notice the water's a little bit filthy here, just about about medium filthy. Um, so you'll probably want to strain this uh, at the end, uh, so you don't inadvertently plug up your uh, intake on your um, on your foam pump. And uh, this is going to be quite sufficient to mix the stuff in its entirety. Once you've made your solution, you don't have to mix it again. Uh, because it is a solution. That is to say, as opposed to a mixture. If you just mix two things that normally don't go into solution, like oil and vinegar, if you let them set for a while, you'll notice they separate out again. A solution does not do that. If anything, it gets even more mixed due to the natural Brownian motion. Okay, so now that we've covered the basic ingredients, being air and foam solution, we're going to talk about the heart of everything, which is the pump. Luckily, there's not really anything to go over. It's just a pump. Okay, this wasn't going to be part of this, but how to troubleshoot a pump. Notice that this one's got a lot of condensation on it. Uh, it wasn't starting, and I think... Well, it's either the pump or the switch, because um, there's not really much else in here. So to test the switch, you'll notice it's just a single pole switch. So if the switch is bad and we short across it with a screwdriver, the pump should work. And I'm kind of hoping that's what the case is because uh, pumps are more expensive than switches. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a shot. There might be a little spark here. Yep, it's the switch. Okay, great. I'll just wire around that for today. Okay, as you can see, I've got a temporary fix here as I just put both wires to the same terminal. This basically cuts the switch out of the circuit. It doesn't matter because I also have a foot switch. Now, if you don't have a foot switch, definitely get one because they are so convenient. And also, I wouldn't be able to do this without one. So, uh, I believe Aircrete Harry comes with these. Uh, if not, if yours didn't, uh, they're about maybe 20 bucks on eBay, so definitely worth having. And of course the final part is the um, actual foam wand, where you basically take all your ingredients and stuff them through a porous canister and get foam out of the other end. And um, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go back to air compressors for a moment. Uh, the reason I didn't put this in at the beginning is because there were a couple things you had to hear first to understand what I'm going to say now. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about is how good your air compressor is. And I know there are recommendations online for how big of an air compressor you need. But remember, air compressor ratings are quite often um, exaggerated. So in order to find out if your air compressor is really good enough, you have to put it to the test. You have to make a batch of foam as big as your batch of air is going to be. So what you do is you dial it in like you normally would and then you fill a vat with foam up to the point where you normally stop and you put you measure the foam at that point too at the end. So you have the beginning and the end and you can compare them because what will happen is if your air compressor isn't strong enough it'll try to keep up but it'll be the pressure will gradually decrease over the pour and that means your weight of your foam will gradually increase. So you'll have very wet foam at the end and that's not going to be good. Now here's the kicker. If you got several cups go ahead and take some in the middle too because you're going to be surprised at what happens in the middle. Um, but that's a good thing because being surprised means you learn something you weren't expecting to learn. Right? And this is the barrel, and you notice I made a small uh, change here. I drilled a hole to hold the foam tube. Totally recommend that. It takes about 10 seconds, um, and it makes it a lot easier for what we're about to do next. Now what we're going to do here is fill this thing up to that line. That's about as far as I would do a normal um, pour. If you go higher, uh, mark it higher, and we're uh, ready to go. Next, get a stack of these. I recommend going to Walmart as they are actually only a dollar there as compared to two dollars at Home Depot. Have a random scrap of plastic to scrape the top off the foam. 
Okay, here's a little quick tip. Uh, you do not have to turn it on and then zero it uh, or tear it as it were. You can do it just by turning it on with the cup already in place. See how that works? Nice and convenient. Keep one of these clean because you're going to need one later because these things turn off unexpectedly. Of course, if you have no electricity, you'll probably be using a scale like this. In that case, you just put this on like so, and then you just turn the dial until it's back to oop, back to zero. And then every measurement thereafter will be already teared. Okay, as you can see, the scale currently says 92 grams, but let me show you what even a light breeze can do. That was just me blowing on it, and it got up to over 100. So you can basically change it by 10 grams just by doing it on a windy day. Okay, there you see we have uh, got our uh, foam set at 92. And now you're going to find out why that doesn't mean as much as you've been led to expect. Uh, we're going to continue to sample it. We're going to make a, a test run all the way up to what a normal mix would be. We're going to sample it at random intervals, and afterwards, I'm going to weigh them in sequence. And uh, I think you're going to be a little surprised at what you see. So there you have it. Uh, regardless of what you were expecting, it doesn't stay the same. It'll vary up to 20 grams per liter over the course of a single batch. And um, I don't really think it's worth going out and buying a better regulator. It'll still vary a little either way. Uh, and Aircrete is very forgiving. What I would do instead is just make sure that after you're done adding all the foam, you continue to mix it for a few minutes, so you get uh, uh, all the high and low densities sort of evened out throughout the batch. And I think that's about the best you can do. Okay, now it's time to recover our um, foaming solution, so we'll first use a pillowcase like this. Don't squeeze it too hard, or you'll be making your own foam generator out of a pillowcase. <laughs> 